Hey Fano, here we are again. Um, we had a seedling workshop uh, last month, and here's my seedlings. I'm about to plant them out uh, before it gets too cold. And at the workshop, we planted some seedlings in here. And those were the ones at the back that we planted out. Those brassicas there is basically the broccolis. And I, the week before that, I planted out my bok choy. And just today, or the other day, was that day? Whatever day it was, planted out some lettuces and bok choy in here, just weeding in around it, um, around my vegetables. Because we don't spray, we are having to contend with all the the bugs and all that. I don't really mind, because at the end of the day, that's what I'm eating. This who here, this fruit. Um, one of the great things about planting a lot of things is you'll find they'll eat particularly the edges a bit more. Um, but yeah, that's alright. Getting food is the main thing. It's feeding us um, and just larging our spaces. Look after the soil. Uh, tomatoes are coming to the end of their cycle so we just really, as you'll see, it's dying off and so I'll be pulling all that up soon and putting down mulch along where the tomatoes were just allow that to break down and feed back into the soil here's our mulch here put a big thick layer in now we're just working on converting this into a chicken coop run space uh, once the last of our fijo is harvest here I'll be trimming these trees out and pretty much from post to post will be the run and then I'll make a coop just here where we collect the eggs or where I'm standing. Um, and then we just sort out the run along at the back here um, with the chemist. Um, resources. So I use a multiple well, resources. We, the primary one is um, I've got uh, organic growers or hua parakore, te waka kaiora. Um, Papa, um, I watch and follow some of the other gardeners that are going on and get, get jungle tips from them. Uh, Jeff Lawton, um, who's from Australia, he does the permaculture. Um, I got the worm farm idea from, from him. So I'm, I'm a pretty much an eclectic gardener. I, I, I collect um, ideas from a range of people, try it out and suit it to our context. And then the Hua Pare Kore um, Waka Kai Ora Kaupapa is, is about how do I ground that into a Māori context. Um, but some of the things um, you would have heard me about, these are some of the resources I use. So I've got a, um, a annual diary that I use. Uh, I have converted it into, particularly on the months um, where I now I run the Maramataka Māori dates alongside the Agorian dates and I'm actually following these ones so like today's the 15th and so we're at Ohua um, Te Pai Orongo is in this phase here and then I just jot down what I'm doing and some some whakaro around uh, activities that, that I'm wanting to do uh, over that period and I've got my little tabs for each week and then I've got a month, a couple of months out that I'm thinking about you know, what we're doing um, over the next couple of months. So too with, um, I got this at Christmas time and um, this is helpful in regards to a New Zealand context. It's come from the Yates community and so it gives us ideas of for the New Zealand context, what's what's helpful um, for planting and so forth, um, and the seasonal seasonal things. Um, but yeah, just I just drop down notes and ideas and fakaro that I've been working on um, over over the night time when it's a bit quiet. So likes it, um, like for example, on the things like huna or uh, phase that, that you're not doing a lot so that's when I'll, I'll get into doing 
doing my kind of research and study and reflection on what's going on in, in the garden and then just recording out what I'm what I'm doing what I'm doing in there um, and yeah and then I've got you know just lip garden layouts and things like that it's uh, a nice whakatawaki koe takahia te mano te tangata you know don't trample on the mana of people across that one just before Easter and I thought that was appropriate for us at the time that we're in but yeah we're in day 15 heading towards Rako Nui for April um, and then I've got a bit of a breakdown on each day or each phase and a little quarter door. I've also got an online uh, resource there on Facebook. I look at, um, yeah, lots of mātauranga out there. And then what I try to do is I think about the context that I'm in and um, see, test it, test it out. Uh, an ongoing activity that we're doing is uh, we're starting to do our own mulch. Uh, we got some funding from uh, Tyndall Foundation um, earlier this year, which enabled us to buy uh, buy a chipper, a small one at this stage, but enables me where I'm going to have beds that are, are dormant for the winter period. I'll put mulch down and build up the soil health in that way. Um, but this all breaks down, keeps the soil covered, keeps the moisture in, and as you can see over there, I've got mulch all through my gut mother. Um, and I'll start slowly putting some on the garden back in there. Um, my pathways are mulched out. And then what I'll do is I'll move my pathway to probably closer to the wall next summer and spring. And I'll use that. Um, to go all in and that'll be my um, garden bed but this was a rubbish tip when we first came here there was just rubbish in there so it's cleaned up really well uh, with our different vegetables got kumara in here kumara growing around here yeah, lots of little different, thing, different things happening gotta put some garlic in here decided play go garlic in, in this space. Yep, coming to the end of the season for a lot of stuff. So it's really just taking time to be still and thinking about what's going on, the way the sun's moving across the sky. Um, I'm looking at putting a, a garden bed in here uh, once the chicken coops up. Going to be putting a tapapa along that wall there. Get some, getting some rocks and just slowly building up some resources for that and that's where I'll germinate my kumara tupu my kumara uh, shoots and I'll delay them in the beds um, but yeah that's my kumara we'll harvest that soon got this early bed here no dig no till and this compost coffee from the church nice you know, wood chips in there I'll just show you what it looks like, it's looking like as an example I'll actually look at that look at that look at that look at that how that's breaking down nah, look at that beautiful look at that see the worms fungi Beautiful. <laughs> that's what you're wanting. That nice. Mm, that smells good. So it's just putting a layer down. Helps suppress the reeds a bit. That's, this grass stuff's terrible. It keeps growing. But the idea being is that I'm building up layers of good soil under here. And then when I want to plant it, 
I just pull back the compost or pull back the mulch, plant in, and then um, she's away. Let the soil break down. Um, and I've got a little bit in this one as well. Let's see if it knows out this side. Yep, see the soil there? Just breaks down. Build up, build up, build up. Let it break down, let it break down. Planting some of my worm castings as a plant way. My um, spinach is taken away. It's like, oof. I think it's partly because it's cooling down too, so it's not so, um, yeah, not so much heat stress. Hey, he's having a little bit of a hard time at the moment. He's got a bit of a respiratory um, problem. So we've got some solution that we're chucking through your nose. Clean that a bit. But yeah, here's what we're doing in our garden. Um, just planning things out slowly. Planting over that side. Planting here. Um, kale's going well. Capskins will store. Put them in. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's another one. I forgot about those. Let's keep going. There's one over there too. Comfrey. Comfrey's a good um, provider of nutrients for the soil. We've got a little comfrey tea over there. There's sugar in it. But yeah, garden forces us to slow down, not be so much in a rush, reconnect to the whenua, uh, reconnect to Fano, reconnect and let the body connect to the ground, whether it's from your hands or your feet. Allowing the wairua to breathe in and breathe out. Reconnect to the cycles, the seasons. What we see in the sky, in regards to the stars. <laughs> and the moon and the sun. The slowing down enables you to understand the rhythms. And the seasonal activities that are going on to get into a cycle of whole order, of well-being uh, that allows you to, to connect to things that are bigger than yourself particularly around just after the pursuit of money to pay the bills anyway that's what the garden's been doing for me it forces me to slow down and even when I get busy I have to think about my mother and what's going on uh, to anticipate the busyness to dissipate being away. Uh, I've got to look after the worms, making sure they're okay. My worm juice, my um, little teas that I'm making, the chicken. Um, and, the, and the lifestyle that we have in the world today where it's all about paying all your bills and debts and the economy and education and careers. It can be quite consuming and for some their health is challenged by it and so it becomes a problem where you're visiting health specialists more than actually connecting to the to the whenua in this beautiful place we have in our world ka hoki mato ki te te whakapapa o te tinana ki te whakapapa o te te one one te whenua nei uh, a te titiro ki ngā mea e hiko e haere ki runga ki roto hoki ngā one one ngā mea pai ngā mea para uh, whakata noho whakata 
noho tonu i ringi te whenua a te titiru, a te whakaro e pāna ki te rongo e pāna ki rongo ngā mea rongo i roto i te ao tūro ngā mea rongo i roto i te, I te mara mahi kai uh, me ngā whakaro e puta mai i ngā kōrero i kōrero te e pāna ki te kumara ka puta mai ngā whakatawā ki whakatau ki e pāna taua kumara e ha te, te pai e ha te mea pai mā tātou i hikoi i rungi te whenua nei Ai. That's part of what we're doing in the mana. All that order there, thinking about our place in the world and what brings life and well-being. Well, I found it. It's my ponderings. What are we doing in the garden? Lots of things to think about. Nga mihi ki te rungarawa, moana, anā ki tanga ki runga i te whenua nei. Nga hua pai. Nga hua kaha, nga hua mauri, mō te tēnana, te whānau, hapu, iwi rānei. Alright then, hei kona.